I was wondering when you'd awaken. How are you feeling? Well, you slept for two days. Only to be expected you'd awaken feeling a bit foggy of mind and sore of body. We can manage all of that with some water and then a gentle walk. You could use the fresh air and I have some business to attend to out in the forest. Shall we? Carefully. Carefully. You must be careful not to move too quickly. You're still weak from your head-on collision with that evergreen tree, remember? The rest has helped you heal, I'm sure, but I still think it best for us to take everything slowly today if you get reacquainted with your feet being back under you. You are more than welcome to use my arm to steady yourself. As I told you before, you won't topple me or be too heavy. If I can hold myself up with these wings, you won't be any more burdensome than another few feathers. I do, actually. I adore the company of the moon. Most of my work I prefer to do at night. I'm not afraid of the darkness, and I find the more sensitive beings are more comfortable working with me once most humans have sought shelter for the evening. We're heading there now. I, I may have to go in ahead to reassure everyone that you're meant to be there, but I think a bit of time in my gardens could be beneficial for you. But there are a few things you need to know first. Mainly the fact that calling it merely a secret garden isn't helpful, other than to illustrate the need to keep it hidden. When we arrive, you may feel a shift in the energy around us. Oh, you're trembling. Don't, don't be afraid. A shift in energy is not always a bad thing, rather a necessity. The garden I tend to is a home to some, but a resting place to many others. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered why you sometimes sense other beings when you're alone? Ghosts is one word for it, but I prefer to call them lost or suspended souls. Souls who are either not aware they have passed, or who have things they must make right before they are able to rest. Some of those souls need a helping hand, and that is where fae like me come in. Some of us are collectors, others guides, and still others of us are what we call bridges. Me. I... Myself am a guide. Others collect the lost souls and bring them here to my garden. I suppose you could call it a soul garden at the end of the day. Collectors bring me lost souls who need time and a safe place to attend to their own healing. And then, when they are ready to move forward, I can help them find the right bridge for the job. Any being with a soul, really. As long as it is not a malevolent spirit, they are welcome to come to my gardens to heal and await the answers they require to move towards ascension and then rebirth if that's their path. Malevolent spirits require a firmer hand than I am capable of, I'm afraid. They, too, have a need to be shepherded and allowed to rest. But the period of healing and incubation is far longer than the souls I typically look after. Of course. Being a soul that has made mistakes or choices we don't always understand does not make them any less worthy of care in the beginning stages of the afterlife. But one has to be specifically trained and possess the proper temperament 
for that particular line of work. It simply would not do to have the souls of young children and angels mingling with the souls of traditional dark fae and fallen ones. A fallen one? Hmm. I'm not sure how much I should tell you about them, to be quite honest with you. I'm not sure how much you know about your own soul, little one. You have quite the strong grip for someone in your current state. <laughs> no, no, you haven't hurt me. You really must stop worrying so much about me and focus more on yourself and your own healing. We have a lot of work ahead of us. That sound you hear, the joy in it, that is the sound of souls of fairies arriving. Even in death, hear joy to their cores. Yes, fairies. The kinds I'm sure you read about as a child. Born of laughter and joy and set with the job of looking after all elements of nature. Well, these particular kinds of fairies, at least. It takes all kinds, you know. Welcome to the soul garden, dear one. Welcome to your rest. It's all right. It's all right. I'm with you now. I know it can come as a bit of a shock upon hearing it for the first time, but I will help you adjust and get settled in here. I'm not sure how you passed, but I know that it is not something you must concern yourself with at this moment. For now, let's get you to your spot. I noticed how much you seemed to enjoy the calm of the water in my cave. The way you tried to keep yourself awake to watch as I worked on ingredients for spells and enchantments. And so... I thought a home here near the river might suit you best. I don't think she's here right now, but I'm very excited for you to meet a few of your neighbors. I think you'll find yourself feeling at home in no time. I wanted to keep it a surprise, but one of your neighbors was a very powerful witch during her most recent life. She has a lot I believe she could teach you about working with nature and the elements, as you seem to have a calling for it. Oh, oh, and there are three fairies who like to spend their time around this segment of the river, so I'm sure you'll be getting to know them as well. You will find the rest and the answers you seek in your time here in this soul garden. I'm sure of it. I know that some may be nervous around you at first, given your history throughout your lifetimes, but I know they will get to know you and all shall be well. Just the way they were nervous around me at first, given my having been born a dark fae. We are more than what we are born as, aren't we? In your time here, you will learn about your origin life the one that started it all, and how that fits with your most recent life. Although, with you, I have a feeling many of your past lives will play a part in your healing and moving on to the next stage. It will take time, but I promise you, I will always be close by. All you have to do is think of me, picture me beside you, and I will come. I promise. You were lost, but you found your way to where you're meant to be. I'm going to go ahead and check in with a few of the others, but you take a moment for yourself here by the river. Oh, that big tree is yours as well. Maybe not what you want to sit under considering your run-in the other day, but when you're ready... 
I'm sure you will find Edwin to be very accommodating. The tree, of course. Everything in my gardens is living in one way or another. Edwin was a fallen one who found his way into this tree once his soul was free. He's been with me since the beginning. His way of making amends for all the souls he took, I suppose. I keep telling him he is free to go with the next group when the bridge arrives, but still he stays. Who knows? Maybe you'll be the soul to finally convince him he's done his part here and is more than worthy of moving to the next stage. He's a very good listener. Aren't you, Edwin? Take a moment here to let your feelings be what they are. No one will be shocked or offended if you need time to scream, cry, anything else. Learning you are no longer living is not an easy thing to process. We'll help you through it. I'm coming, Kato. Coming. Kato is one of the younger owls here. Sometimes, she just needs more of my attention and reassurances. And I have been gone looking after you for a few days. I best be seeing to her, but I'll be back in a few hours to see how you're doing. I find that breathing and letting your feet dangle in the river can help when the sadness is more than I can bear. Kato... I swear to the gods, you think you're the only one in need of me. That simply is not the case. 